Hi guys and welcome to my channel Knowledge Resurrection. Well in this video we are going to find out how convenient it is to drive an electrical vehicle as compared to a normal gasoline car. And this is the second video on electric cars versus conventional cars. In my first video I have done a detailed cost analysis of both the cars. So if you haven't watched it yet please check it out first. Ok so now almost everyone knows how convenient it is to drive a petrol car and almost all of you had the experience. So here we are gonna focus more about electrical vehicles. For comparison I have taken Tata Nexon EV and Tata Nexon Petrol. The most important factor in convenience is time. You want to reach your destination as fast as possible. And the drawback with the electrical vehicle here is the charging time. As we know that refueling the petrol car mostly takes about 5 to 10 minutes. But that's not the case in electrical vehicles. You actually have to plan about your charging time. Let's see the calculations for Nexon EV. Now Nexon EV has an energy density or in normal terms I can say a battery capacity of 30.2 kWh and there are two ways of charging it. You can charge it at your home using a normal 230V and 15A 3-pin socket or you can charge it at any public DC fast charging stations available. So now let's see how much time it will consume if you charge your EV at your home. As we know that your home socket voltage is about 230V and the current output is about 15A. Therefore, the power output can be calculated as V into Y which is equal to 230 into 15 which is 3.45 kW. Now Nexon EV onboard charger has a power rating of 3.3 kW which means it can consume at a max of 3.3 kW from your home socket. And the battery capacity of Nexon EV is 30.2 kWh. So if we calculate the time consumed for charging 0% to 100% which is equals to battery capacity divided by power output multiplied by charging efficiency. This charging efficiency is not 100% because some of the power gets dissipated in going from socket to EV battery. So the time consumed for charging is equals to 30.2 divided by 3.3 multiplied by 0.84. This 0.84 is charging efficiency which is approximately 84%. So the time consumed for charging 0% to 100% comes to be 10.89 hours which means it will take around 10.89 hours to charge your electrical vehicle Tata Nexon EV from 0% to 100% at your home. Now the another way of charging your Nexon EV is, our, is at a public DC charging station. Now these are fast chargers. This can give a power output of about 50 kW. But Nexon EV fast charging supports up to 25 kW only. So the time taken for a full charge is, equal, is equals to battery capacity divided by power supply multiplied by charging efficiency which is equals to 30.2 kW divided by 25 kW which is the power supply and 0.84 is the charging efficiency which comes to be 1.43 hours. So you can fully charge your Nexon EV at a public charging station in about 1.43 hours. So to compare, a 44 litre tank capacity of a Nexon petrol variant with a mileage of 15 km per litre will give you a range of 660 km and then you have to spend 5 to 10 minutes for refueling your tank to get another 660 km. But a Nexon EV with a 30.2 kWh battery capacity will give you a real world range of 200 km. I know that the company claims it to be 312 km but if you check on road the real world range comes to be at a max of 200 km which is about one third of the range provided by the Nexon petrol. And then again you have to spend about 1.43 hours for charging at a public DC fast charging station or about 10.89 hours if you charge it at your home and then you will have your next 200 km of range. So in terms of charging time and range Nexon EV is not a very convenient as compared to its petrol alternative. Now some of you might say. But it's a lot cheaper to charge an EV than to pay the price of petrol for refueling a petrol car. So for this you have to check out my first video. I have done every calculation there. You can find out how much you have to spend and how much is your actual savings. Moving ahead, another important aspect when we talk about the convenience is the driving experience. Now since you are paying a lot more for your electrical vehicle, you should have a better driving experience. First of all, let's compare the performance factors for both the cars. If we compare the acceleration, the time taken for Nexon EV to reach 0 to 100 km per hour is 9.9 .9 seconds, whereas for Nexon Petrol is about 11.67 seconds. The top speed of Nexon EV is limited to 120 km per hour, whereas Nexon Petrol can do a 180 km per hour. The curve weight of for Nexon EV is around 1400 kg and the Nexon Petrol is about 1250 kg. Weight is more for Nexon EV because of its heavy battery and the maximum power for Nexon EV is about 127.235 horsepower which is provided by the motor and the Nexon petrol gives a power of about 118.358 horsepower. The peak torque for Nexon EV is around 245 Nm and the Nexon petrol the peak torque is about 170 Nm. 
Now, an electrical vehicle drivetrain provides a noticeably different driving experience from an IC vehicle. The hallmark of the EV is the instant torque that the electric motor provides when the accelerator is pressed, delivering immediate power and acceleration to the wheels. Building up speed in a conventional IC vehicle requires the engine to wind up and for the transmission to progress through a series of gears. The feeling of shifting gears is familiar to anyone who has ridden in a normal car. But the EV feels totally different and is particularly noticeable. There is only one gearbox in Nexon EV and when the driver presses the pedal, the power is immediately fed to the wheels generating 245 Nm of torque and 127 horsepower. Also electric cars have a low center of gravity than conventional cars because the battery pack is placed underneath the car which provides the EV an advantage of better handling, reduced rollover risks and the car will feel more connected to the road. The second hallmark of an EV is the silence. The motor makes virtually no noise. The first time that you start your car, you will not even realize that it's on. The EV is just quiet and still. Once moving at highway speeds, there is of course some road vibrations and barely perceptible wind noises. But overall the ride will be very smooth and quieter than a normal petrol car. The third difference when driving an EV is the regenerative braking which uses the motor to slow down the car and recharge the batteries instead of using the normal wheel brakes. For the driver, it gives the feeling of a noticeable slowdown when your foot is removed from the accelerator. It takes a little getting used to and adjustment to keep the car moving smoothly in traffic. The benefit is that it recharges the battery and saves wear of the brake pads, extending their life. It is fun when you can see that you are saving power and it is said that in stop and go traffic, it is possible to use barely any battery power unlike a petrol vehicle which burns fuel in traffic. Electrical vehicles also have significant less moving parts than conventionally fueled vehicles and therefore requires much less maintenance. There's no oil change, fuel filter, timing belts or mufflers to replace. Another factor to consider convenience of an electric car is the availability of charging stations. There are two ways to charge your EV. First is from your home charging station which is a regular and slow charging and the another is from a public fast DC charging stations. Now if you want to refuel your petrol car, you can almost find a petrol pump anywhere near you but that's not the case in EV charging stations as of today. According to Market Watch, there are only about 250 public charging stations operating in India. You can locate all these charging stations by visiting nexonev.tatamatas.com slash charging dash locator or you can download Recharge India app. This is the map showing all the public DC charging stations available in the country. So at this point of time, I would say that if you drive for a short distance, mostly around the city or from your home to office, the EV will be very convenient for you. But if you are planning for a long trip, then at present time, taking an EV with you will be a little troublesome as you have to plan your journey by checking where you can find the charging stations first and then you have to spend at least one hour there charging your EV. And if you can't find a charging station within your EV range, then you probably can't go on that trip. Now surely this will not be the situation in coming years, as government is taking huge steps to promote the use of electrical vehicles. The government has already launched National Electric Mobility Mission Plan 2020 in 2012 with the aim of improving the national fuel security through the promotion of electric and hybrid vehicles. The government also started faster adoption and manufacturing of hybrid and electric vehicles FAME scheme which provides incentives for purchasing electric vehicles. Phase 1 of the scheme lasted from 2015 to 2019 while phase 2 began in 2019 and is planned to be completed in 2022. The government has given sanction for setting up 2,636 charging stations in 62 cities across 24 states and union territories under the FAME India scheme which will encourage original equipment manufacturers to launch new electric vehicle models. Government is releasing tenders to increase charging infrastructure in the country. The scheme offers incentives to the electric and hybrid vehicles ranging from Rs 1,800 to Rs 29,000 for scooters and motorcycles and Rs 1.38 lakhs for cars. The Government of India has also declared public charging stations and EV charging business as a de-licensed activity. The Government has laid down rules that there should be at least one charging station in a grid of 3 km across 3 km in cities and one charging station every 25 km on both sides of highways. This coverage is to be achieved in cities with a population of more than 4 million and all existing expressways and important highways connected to these mega cities by 2022. And by 2030, the government aims to make India a 100% electric vehicle nation. So that's all for this video guys. My job was to put all the facts relating to convenience of an electric vehicle 
versus a petrol car in front of you so that you can make a decision suitable as per your need. Also in this video I have not talked about a very important factor while buying an electric vehicle that is the environmental effects. Now as we know that the electrical vehicles are a cleaner source of energy and does not produce any harmful gases. But many people also say that most of the electricity is generated by burning fossil fuels which ultimately creates harmful gases. So what's the point of buying an EV? Well in my next video I am gonna answer this question mathematically. Yes we are gonna calculate how much CO2 a petrol car makes versus how much CO2 is produced for generating electricity to fully power a EV battery. So if you are interested you can check out that video. Also if you have learned something from this video please like and subscribe to my channel.